when we start working with Inkscape, trying to prepare things for the plasma cutter, first thing you need to do is have an image. So you might want to go to the internet. As you open up Google, for instance, if you go to images, let's say we want to find a horse. Okay, now if I look at that, none of these horses are going to work in the plasma cutter. So maybe what I need to do is I need to change on my tools. I go to my type. Let's go to clip art instead and find a horse. All right, well, there's a horse. There's one of the horse that's running. Uh, there's a large one we don't necessarily want. And also, if you notice down in the side, it tells you how big the file is. We don't necessarily need that large of a file. So let's take this one. I'm going to right mouse, and I'm going to save the image as. I'm going to put it on my desktop. Um, and I'm just going to call it simply horse. Now I've saved an image to my desktop. So if I get out of the internet, you can see that now it has been saved right here to my uh, desktop. Now as I open up Inkscape, it'll take a moment for it to boot up. Once I've done that, and you've, assuming you have your Inkscape on your computer, you're going to go ahead now and we're going to import that drawing. It's kind of important you understand that. It's got to be an import, not an open. You can slide through it until you go, okay, there's the imported drawing that I want. Now you can see that this thing is l much larger than the sheet of paper I have and we like to use the sheet of paper kind of as an idea. Oh I see that's an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper it gives me an idea how much larger if I'm going to produce something that it's going to be. You can also and I want you to make sure you understand this part. You see the little lock between the uh, width and the height? If you lock that it constrains the proportions up and down. If you don't lock that, then you can constrain, it doesn't constrain the proportions, it could distort it. So you might just actually want it distorted for one reason or another. We'll leave it sitting right there like that. If you don't like the way you had it, you can always hit the control button and the Z button at the same time, and it will undo anything you just did. It's the same thing as coming up here and hitting the undo scale or the redo scale. Once we've got the image, and we're going to place it in the center so that we can work with it, we need to be able to change that image so that the program will work with it. First thing you're going to do is go to Path, and where it goes down to Trace Bitmap, we're going to trace the bitmap. And it opens up this property inspector and says, well, um, is, if this is OK, we need to turn that image into a bitmap. So we're going to say OK. If you have one that has a lot of gray in it, you can actually change the threshold up and it'll turn more of the gray into black. But for black images, this works fine, so we'll hit OK. Now, w once I've done that, nothing appears to change unless you move it back there like this. Then you need to highlight the first image, hit your delete button, and now it is gone. Now this is an actual bitmap image which we can deal with. So the next thing I'm going to do with that image is I'm going to go back up to path and you're going to watch this as you see I go to object to path. I'm not going to hit it yet because I want you to watch down here. It says path. I have 209 nodes in layer one. So this bitmap has already been put into paths and nodes. But I like to hit it anyway and it might tell me, oh, you haven't got no objects to convert to path. Click off of it and click back on to make sure that you have made a path with nodes. Now let me show you what nodes are. If I click that Edit Paths to Nodes button over here on the left side, left hand property inspector, those are nodes. And if you don't like the way that they're arranged, let me zoom in just a little bit. Hit my magnifying glass. And I'm going to go in here. Let's just zoom in on the top part of this. And let's say I want to edit some of these nodes. I could change the shape of the ear slightly by editing nodes. Now on the ends of these little, you notice that there are these little handles on the nodes. You can actually change the shape of things by changing the orientation of the curve. So that's how you work with your node tool, but you have to have them in nodes to do that. Okay, now clicking back out there, you can use your magnifying tool again and hit minus. Get back to where you can actually work with it. Your selector tool to be able to move it again 
or slide it back and forth. Now that's really important that you be able to convert from an image off the internet into a bitmap and be able to modify the nodes for that. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to take and add to it a nameplate underneath. Now you notice that I've got that in red so I want it in black because I'm going to actually combine the two of these. Now I don't know if you can see this or not but you can actually still see the hoof through that. That indicates we have two different layers. We need to have it on a similar layer. There's another one over there. So what I'm going to do is once I've selected this I need to do that object to path as well. Now you see down below it now has eight nodes etc in uh, that layer. So we've now been able to convert it to paths. Now a couple of other things. I'm going to control Z and go back one second and take that and start again from a different perspective. When you first draw your uh, rectangle you'll notice that there's a little round dot right here. If I were to drag that dot down and this dot over I can actually round the size of my corners. If I want to make a total oval instead just make them to where they match. And now I have an oval shaped object like this. Now you can go back in at any moment, just selecting it like that. Um, if I select my um, nodes tool, I can alter it again, but it's fastest to do it when you first put it in. Okay, next thing I wanted to show you on this then, if I alter it back so that it's a little bit more appropriate for what we're going to do, like this. If I my selector like that you notice the shape of the arrows as I click back and forth with my mouse it changes from straight out so I can alter it like this if you grab it from the corner and the lock is off I can change it any way I want to just width just height or you can accomplish the same thing attaching it to the actual corner and it's faster that way if I constrain my proportions changing any of them like that you can do it like this but grabbing these makes sure that the relationship of height to width remains the same but you can still modify the width but it locks that so that you can drag them from the corner all right now i'm going to go ahead and increase the size of that i'm going to go back to my magnifying tool go back out scale out i'm going to pick up that object and drag it over here where i had it before i'm going to width it increase its width, increase its height. Well, wait a minute. Isn't there an easier way to do that? Well, yes, there is. If you look up here, I got this in uh, millimeters. I really need to have it in inches. Now, when you first start your document, I should have gone over here in my properties inspector using my tool. And sometimes this tool that looks like a little wrench may be up located here, but it just looks like a wrench. You can also access it from going down to document properties. But you set your display units in inches and also your custom units into inches. And now it will always be in this document in inches right here. So now this tells me this rectangle that I have selected is almost 18 inches by almost uh, three and a quarter. Well, I don't want it almost. I want it exactly 18. So I highlight that. And on my numbers on my keypad, I hit 18. If I hit the tab button, now it leaves that. It will go over to the next one. Of course, it actually tabbed that. I should have tabbed twice. And now if I want it four inches high, just hit four and then hit enter. And it creates the exact size that you want. Now I've still got this thing. This one I have not converted into nodes yet. You see it's still a rectangle. So I go up to path, object to, uh, to path. It creates my nodes now. Now this is the trick I want you to make sure you catch. If I'm going to attach this to that, so it doesn't just do this, I highlight the one, I hit my shift key, click on the other one, and then I go up here to um, path, and I go union. Now you'll notice that this doesn't look semi-transparent, but more importantly, if I drag one, the whole thing is now a single object. Now you can always undo that if you want, but that's how you would actually do that in the beginning. Now it's connected as a single piece. So now I've created something. I don't have a um, 
any names in it, but I have attached two objects together. And that's going to be summation for this lesson. On the next one, I'll show you how to actually take this exact image and be able to put lettering inside it.